Uh, the first part is actually what should be a review from Math 1, talking about re direct variations. Direct variations um, occur when y equals kx and k is a constant of variation. k will always be a number that we'll be able to find. Uh, so an example of a direct variation would be something like y equals 3x. Uh, you'll see that this is always a linear it function that has a y-intercept of zero. If it, has a, if it has a y intercept other than zero, it's not a direct variation is what basically comes down to. Um, so on the first problem, if y varies directly as x and y equals negative 15 when x equals 5, then find y when x equals 3. Uh, the first thing we would want to do is make a function to describe the situation given this information right here. I'm going to start off by writing down y equals kx. And then I'm going to substitute in the values that they gave me for the situation of negative 15 for y and 5 for x. Now I'd be able to figure out what the constant of variation is um, by dividing by 5 on both sides. I would get negative 3 for k. Now I would be able to make my function. My function would have to be y equals negative 3x since that was my constant of variation. The rest of the problem is really easy. It says find y when x is equal to 3. I'm just going to substitute that 3 in for x. y equals negative 3 times 3 for x now. And that's going to be negative 9. Uh, what you will see is that when uh, coordinates are direct variations, you can actually do the division y divided by x to see that. So if I did negative 9 divided by 3, that's negative 3. If I did negative 15 divided by 5, that's negative 3. They'll always divide to the same constant value, which is the constant of variation, is, how, is what y divided by x is. That's just kind of like a supplement to add on to what I'm doing with this problem. What you need to do is what I wrote down on the screen. All right, you can actually uh, take a direct variation and kind of like expand it out a little bit to create something called a joint variation. A uh, joint variation just basically has one more variable thrown on into it. As you can see, if y varies jointly as x and z, then y would equal k times x times z, uh, k still being a constant. Uh, so in this problem, uh, suppose y varies jointly as x and z, so that's actually matching our situation that we have here, y equals k times x times z. Um, find y when x equals 10 and z equals 5. Well, tough thing is, I, I can't do that yet. I need to know what my constant is. That's where this uh, hypothesis is going to come into play, this given information. y equals 12 when x equals 3 and z equals 8. So I'm going to substitute that stuff in. 12 equals k times 3 times 8. Now I can figure out what my constant variation is. So I'll do that right now. 3 times 8 is 24. Divide by 24 on both sides, and I get 1 half is my constant of variation. So now I've got a function. My function is y equals 1 half xz. Now time to finish the problem. It said find y when x equals 10 and z equals 5. I'm going to throw 10 in for x and 5 in for z. Uh, and just multiply that out. Half of 10 is 5. 5 times 5 is 25, and I'm done. Uh, so direct and joint variations are a lot alike. We're going to see places where both of these are used uh, coming up tomorrow. Um, but you'll uh, see that like a direct variation could be anything like distance equals rate times time, something like that. All right, time for an inverse variation. Um, I spit out one direct variation, distance equals rate times time, but uh, something like time would equal distance divided by your rate of travel. This would be an example of an inverse variation, that r varies inversely as t. It's not a direct variation. See right here, d distance tra varies directly with t, but here time varies inversely with rate. So this is an example of an inverse variation. So if y ever varies inversely as x, y equals k divided by x. The key being that with an inverse, you're actually going to be dividing by your variable, not multiplying by it. Uh, taking a look at this problem down here, um, r varies inversely as t. So I'm going to set that up as r varies 
inversely as t, meaning it's not going to be k times t, but k divided by t. And now what's going to happen is that as t, r equals negative 6 when t equals 2. This is our given information. This right here will allow us to figure out what k is. So negative 6 for r, k over 2 for t. And I will multiply by 2 on both sides. And I will get negative 12 is my constant of variation. So I now know my function that r equals negative 12 over t. Um, now I'm ready to roll with the problem. It says find r when t is negative 7. So I just got to put that negative 7 in for t. And the only thing I can do to simplify that is just cancel the negatives. So 12 sevenths is my final answer. Uh, if they had given me r instead and asked me to find t, that's where I would do a problem like what you saw me do on the warm-up, where I'd multiply the variable to the other side and then um, <clears throat> do my division to finish it out. Uh, we'll probably see one on the next problem. All right, lovely little problem here. If you're watching the video, just hit pause, read through it. Basically, you're going to have two different apparent diameters of the sun. The sun will look larger when you're on Earth, closer to it. Um, and what's going to happen here is, let me consider the first diameter from Earth. So diameter 1, subscript 1, equals my constant of variation divided by my distance away. Um, and, and I might just uh, put, go ahead and put in the... 93 million miles. Um, I can actually just write it as a 93 since the other one is in millions of miles as well. Okay, uh, so this is the diameter of the sun on Earth is equal to k over 93 because its apparent length is inversely proportional to the distance of the, from the object. That's the reason why it's k divided by 93, inverse proportion. Now, there's another diameter, apparent diameter, when you're on Mars. All, all of a sudden, the sun will look smaller because you're further away. So the constant of variation there will be over um, 142.5 million miles since you're further away. These two constants, well, it's in the name. They're going to be the same. They're going to stay constant throughout these two. Um, and by the way, this was a D subscript 2 right here since we're on Mars. So this is Mars, this is Earth. All right, let's go ahead and uh, compare how these distances look. So we're wanting to see how much smaller it looks on Mars to Earth. So since Mars is this diameter 2 to Earth, which is diameter 1, I'll actually just insert this stuff right here. I haven't found the K, but it's actually not really going to matter at the end. So if I have diameter 2, K over 142.5, divide by diameter 1, K over 93, I can actually invert this uh, fraction down here to make it K over 142.5. The numerator will multiply it by 93 over K. And what happens there is the k's will cancel, and I have 93 over 142.5. Okay, um, now what's going to happen here is that actually gives us a percentage if we actually uh, type that in our calculator, and that's what I invite you to do at the moment. What we get is about 65.3%. It, it comes out 0.6%. Five, three, which is about 65.3%. Now what that tells me is the image of the sun on Mars is only 65.3% the image that the sun is here on Earth, which that's a reduction of 35.7%. Because it's not 100%, it's 35.7% less than what we're seeing here on Earth. Um, a significantly smaller sun is what it would look like, even though it is the same sun. Uh, this gives you kind of a bearing on uh, where these inverse variations are used. Please don't get intimidated by that problem. It's more like an expansion problem, kind of like showing you where it's used. Don't think that 
all the test questions are going to be like that. We'll see examples of word problems tomorrow uh, in, on day eight. All right, and this is about as complicated as this stuff can get. Uh, suppose if f varies directly to g and f varies inversely as h. So you actually got a combination of things going on. So it's called a combined variation. So f varies directly with g, so k times g, but inversely as h. So divided by h. That's my setup. Find g when f equals 6 and h equals negative 16. Can't do that yet. What I'm going to do is focus on this last part to find the constant of variation first. That if g equals 10, k times 10, uh, when h equals 4, putting in a 4 for h, and f equals negative 6. So now I'll figure out what my k is really quick. I will multiply both sides by 4 to get negative 24 equals 10k. I'll divide by 10 and I'll get negative 2.4. Now I've got a function I can work with. f equals negative 2.4 g over h. And it says find g when f is 6 and h is negative 16. f is 6, h is negative 16. All right, and what's going to happen here? I would, uh, first of all, personally, just cancel the negatives right there. I would uh, multiply both sides by 16. And if I do 6 times 16, I get 96 equals 2.4g. And I'll divide both sides by 2.4. And my final answer for g is 40. All right, and again, we'll see scenarios where this stuff is used tomorrow, uh, so look forward to it then.